Um, yeah, my name is Larry Apollonio. I uh, presented here a few times. <laughs> I, I think we might have to live with this. Um, uh, you know, I did several presentations here. Um, it seems like the uh, the Arduino series seems to be the ones that draw people. So um, I kept kept up with it. I did other things. Let's not rehash my failures. But <laughs> um, it, it seems like the uh, Arduino was, was a hit. So. And uh, maybe not so much uh, PowerPoint. So yeah, um, welcome to Linux Fest 2018. Um, I, uh, yep, uh, that was, this is on uh, USB-8266. Um, and Arduino and all that jazz. So who am I? Like I said, my name is Larry Apollonio. I did several presentations. Uh, my day job is uh, I, Linux, I manage Linux servers at the Port of Seattle. Um, yeah, this is a Windows 10 box, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, see, God is punishing me. No, <laughs> this happened to me last time I presented on the, um, uh, on uh, using PowerPoint at, so uh, I think the, the trick is to use like Google Chrome or something like that and go web basic. Um, so um, I do this, uh, this stuff for fun. I'm not a pro, okay? I, I make mistakes. Um, you know, if I, I might suggest something that's totally not right and, you know, um, I, I still put resistors on my LED, so that's a good thing. I didn't, don't jack them up straight, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes when I say 3.3 oh, volts is, is all right, but 5 should work, then, you know, hopefully. I, <laughs> I know some of you guys burned out some of your stuff. So. Momentarily. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, I don't do this professionally. Um, I do this for fun, and then you know, um, I, I, if you guys talk to me, we can relate on our fun little adventures together that we've had uh, making stuff. So a presentation outline, oh, and a little uh, disclaimer. I, I ripped this from an old presentation. And uh, you know, when you do it last minute and edit uh, things, it might be wrong. <laughs> I'm hoping I uh, cleaned it up enough last night. So um, anyway, um, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Arduino, uh, the ESP8266, uh, which is a microcontroller that has an included Wi-Fi network, so you don't have to, if you guys are familiar with the UNO and you want to put it on a network, you usually put a Ethernet shield uh, with, um, yeah, let, um, with, here's a Arduino UNO, and, you know, this one has an Ethernet shield inside, and with the um, ESP8266s, uh, this is what we have, a Wemos D1 Mini. It has the, um, it's smaller, fits on a breadboard, and <coughs> has Wi-Fi built in. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, and then we'll also have some uh, 433 megahertz devices. They're inexpensive wireless devices. And then um, I'll touch on a little bit on uh, MQTT protocol. I don't want to delve too much into it. Uh, because that's the way I communicate with um, on my network with, with my IoT devices. <laughs> Come on in. Okay, so Arduino, what is it? Some of you like didn't raise your hand when I asked uh, if uh, you guys programmed in Arduino. Uh, here's a definition from the web. It's uh, Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on an easy to use hardware and software. It is in intended for anyone making interactive projects. Yeah, my definition is uh, a cool kit that enables you to build your own <laughs> electronics easily. So I've done several things, you know, at home. Um, you know, I, I was amazed when, hey, my PC can control LED lights. <laughs> um, and it's, it was cheap, right? Uh, and then as time moved on, it got even cheaper. And then I, I wanted to do things like put stuff on the network. And uh, um, that's how I evolved. And I, I still do an intro to Arduino class. Um, maybe next year I'll, in the um, computer lab, I'll set up something with uh, this lower uh, basic Arduino stuff. But um, this time around, I did a little bit more advanced thing in, the, in that lab a couple doors down. So here, let me show you guys uh, Arduino in action. Um, so 
this is the Arduino IDE. Okay, and um, uh, this is uh, what I use for the Linux Fest. One of the what they call sketches. That, I know some people call them programs, but um, they're called sketches in Arduino um, that I use for uh, this Linux Fest uh, 2018. And um, uh, th this is how the code looks like. I don't want to gloss too much over it. Oh, it didn't, didn't display. I have to uh, close my PowerPoint presentation. I tell you, being punished. <laughs> <laughs> my mouse just vanished. Oh, the screen's extended. Full screen PowerPoint doesn't show the screen. Oh, really? So, um... Go out of the split screen mode. Let me go back to this and... Is this PowerPoint hell? Yeah. <laughs> I don't do much PowerPoints. <laughs> For real. You know, I, the, 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 the stuff I do is uh, hands-on. People sit next to me and then we, we go through it. You might be able to drag the Arduino. Because I don't think I have it as a split screen. Oh, yeah. It's a shared screen, but the PowerPoint sees it as a split screen. Now let's close this. Yeah, let's shut this off. So you can see that now, right? Okay. So um, that's that's um, the uh, Arduino IDE. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Uh, you know I. This was meant. This this sketch was meant for um, uh, Linux Fest 2018, and what it does is uh, it takes 433 megahertz signals, um, and it translates it to uh, MQTT so that you can take input and send stuff to devices. Uh, so when when you um, start up the IDE, you have to make sure you have the right type of board. It says Uno here, but the stuff that I'm actually manipulating is an ESP uh, Wemos D1 Mini. And uh, it's not plugged in right now. Uh, I guess I'll plug it in. In uh, Linux, when you plug it in, and um, you run dmessage right after you uh, uh, plug it in, it'll, it'll tell you what port you have. In Windows, it sometimes tells you on the bottom here, uh, but <coughs> this is nice enough to tell you what port it's on. And then um, once you get the port and the um, the right board you have, then you can compile. It'll take a few seconds, um, and then upload it, upload the sketch to your device. But anyway, that's uh, Arduino. Um, that's. Where want to go with that? Excuse me. It it can. You can just compile it, and um, other ways you can do it is um, compile it and then make a like a hex or bin file, and then give it to somebody else, and then they can upload it to their their device um, using a firmware flashing software. Uh, but for development, yeah, usually people use the um, IDE, and it, it you can just compile or compile and upload. Uh, sorry, guys. Back to the presentation. Okay, so one thing that is uh, interesting with the um, Arduino, uh, yeah, one thing um, with the uh, Arduino, and when you do this type of project, the version of Arduino, the um, version of the compiler uh, 
and the um, relative libraries, they kind of do matter. Um, so I, I tried an, an older version of this Arduino, and uh, it didn't work for me. Um, the, the libraries for the radio uh, just didn't work. It kept crashing my bones. So if you guys want, um, nowadays when I post source code up on the, you know, for, to share, I put down what it was compiled on. So that way, um, if somebody's like running um, an older version, 1.8.3 or something like that, um, they'll know that, hey, he, he did this and got it working with, you know, 8.5. And um, same with the, the um, version of the compiler for the ESP8266. Um, so there's a way in Arduino you can kind of downgrade or upgrade, but and I'm just sharing what I've got. And, um, uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, at the end, I'll show you a website that I'll, I'll post all this information so you guys don't have to take notes. Um, so now, the uh, moving on to ESP266, I mentioned that, um, you know, a lot of the Arduino stuff, they, it was originally based on the Arduino Uno, but it didn't have network connectivity. So somebody um, came out with the ESP8266 chip, and um, they, they found out that you can use the Arduino IDE to compile and, um, you know, so you don't have to uh, learn something new. You know, strings work the same way, um, uh, you know, uh, the timing, the, the way that you format your um, Arduino code. So, um, you know, uh, and I, I've just noticed it appearing in a lot of IoT devices. Uh, there's some uh, wall warts that can turn on, stuff on and off. I have a, um, uh, an LED, I don't know if you guys are into the strip LEDs. I have one that can control uh, strip LEDs. Um, uh, there's one called a Sonoff that you can turn on and off uh, AC devices. Uh, but um, yeah, it comes in several packages and, um, oops, oh, uh, thank you. It comes in several packages and the one that I like is either the um, Wemos D1 Mini, which is smaller. It's but a little bit more than a square inch large. And another one called a Node MCU, uh, which is longer, takes more space, and there's several other pins on there, but um, I find that the smaller one um, is better for real estate on your breadboard. Um, there's another device, I, didn't, I don't have any pictures, uh, called the ESP01 that a lot of people like, and they primarily use it just for communication. Sorry, I uh, didn't have any pictures of those devices. I uh, thought I had them, but and you know, like I said, uh, a lot of products are coming out. Um, here's one that um, uh, I found that looks pretty good. Um, so, you know, um, this cl this class is on you know, bridging the 433 megahertz networks with uh, you know, a regular TCP/IP Wi-Fi network. I, I, you know, every time I do this Arduino projects at home, I think, ooh. This is a million dollar idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with a device. I'm gonna 3D print it and then get it, um, you know, made in China. And then somebody comes out and beats me, right? So this is a, does the same thing, smaller, cheaper, like 16 bucks. And then, um, you know, it's kind of nice. I took, I bought one, took it apart. Like, uh, okay, it was that idea. But <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, I've mentioned these packages. Uh, there's actually a Uno shield for it, um, and uh, one thing to be aware of is the big difference between a Uno and an ESP8266 is it's 3.3 volts. Um, if you try to run something that insists on 5 volts and not 3.3 volt tolerant, you can fry your Pi, well, fry your ESP8266. Uh, so you know. Using a voltage divider or a level shifter or a MOSFET to drop down the signals is, is well, you know, recommended. Um, I prefer the MOSFET way, but uh, you know, just make sure that when you communicate with a uh, device with your uh, ESP8266 or Raspberry Pi, make sure it's 3.3 volts. So now I'm uh, going to talk about the 433 megahertz devices. Um, so there's a lot. Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, 
that um, a lot of 433 megahertz devices. Here's a one that I, I didn't realize was 433 megahertz device. I um, have this uh, had this alarm system at home, and you're gonna find out why they shouldn't advertise this as a security. <laughs> but yeah, I was, uh, uh, as I was trying uh, experimenting with 433 megahertz devices, I was like, hey. Every time I walk in this room, I get a signal, you know, something <laughs> pops up. Then I realize, oh my God, this, these things are talking 433 megahertz. Um, and uh, there's, there's other devices out there. Um, from Harbor Freight, they sell these, uh, these other systems here. Um, you know, uh, it's... What is it? It's a um, motion sensor. You know, um, and like I said, it's security system. There's a, I mean, if you're doing this for fun and not relying it to protect your house, that's one thing, right? And that's, <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've named this, I, I've, I've started calling this not a security system. I started calling this a home monitoring system because it's kind of cool. It's still some utility to it. Uh, like one time I was at work and I told my coworker, hey, well, check, out, check this out. I called my, one of my kids and said, hey, go check the mail, the mailbox. So, they exit the door, and of course, I get an email that the front door is open. They walk past the, the first sensor, and I get an email. They open up the uh, mailbox, I get an email. They come back and cross back the first sensor and um, open the door to get in the house. And uh, I said, see, look, I, uh, I know what time and you know, when they went. Because, you know, the kids, they'll say, ah, yeah, I got it. I checked it already. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, uh, the, the interesting thing is uh, with these 433 megahertz devices is they all emit a supposedly unique code, okay? Um, when this triggers, you guys will see, oops, that's a transmitter. You guys will see that um, uh, it sends it from the end. And then like, if I press the doorbell, it should have changed, right? Um, if device doorbell. Yeah, um, and then you know there's a vibration. vibration sensor. Yeah, so the vibration sensor. If I, you know, that would trigger. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have Christmas lights. Um, I don't know where the other part went. Okay. So uh, you can buy these on uh, eBay. So this part um, talks to this, and you can turn it on and off. But you'll notice that when it, it, it starts sending a signal. Mm -hmm. Not only can you receive, but you can transmit. And I don't know the FCC legality regarding it. I don't know if it falls under a ITSM or something like that, or um, ISM, um, Industrial Scientific and <coughs> Management. But uh, um, you know, clearly, these devices are being sold to the consumer space to turn on lights on and off. So what you have there is the receiver. So whenever I press something or something gets triggered, um, a signal gets sent. You can also send the device, send, send signal, sorry. Um, and it will turn on, uh, it will turn on this um, switch for you. Uh, What's the range of transmission? Like can I turn on and off my neighbor's lights? That's a problem, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. So um, some other cool stuff like you know this this is with that um, Harbor Freight uh, door sensor you know um, it kind of you can actually have it chime manually um, so you know you can shove this in your kid's room and when they don't want to respond to you you just keep binging this in. <laughs> <laughs> um, some other cool things that uh, I wanted to show you guys was um, oops. so like there, I have this keypad here. And uh, you know it's a 433 megahertz keypad for like 20 bucks, and um, you know when you when you type in the code and press arm, it's it sends a 24-bit signal, um, and then when you hit disarm, when you hit away, or when you hit doorbell, it all hits, it sends a signal as well, and uh, you can program it at five different um, U, uh, RFID fobs, and each fob that you you, you uh, trigger, so I think you might see um, it should have uh, given you a 
RFID number, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like a RFID one or two? Two. Yeah, so I have a RFID one here. Yeah, RFID <coughs> one should be two. One. So um, yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is that if your neighbor's got one of these, you just sniff all the packets and then Absolutely. You bring them to their house. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's not using any kind of rolling code or nope, anything. Nope. These don't use rolling codes. So if you go to eBay and then you type in like 433 megahertz security devices, and you get one of these. Yeah, you can like totally like sniff people's signal. Have that listen and have that transmit, right? So. Um, that's why I, I had to go back to the, my disclaimer of saying I don't know how legal it is to transmit. I just, just I know my coworker who does radio stuff says, "Oh, you gotta be careful. You know, this 433 megahertz transmitting. You're, you didn't get an FCC certified, blah blah blah." And then he scared me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's safe to assume that if the FCC can't handle network neutrality, they probably can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm safe. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, there's like a whole bunch of uh, devices, and you know, you can send stuff and receive stuff. Um, the other stuff I've seen was um, like weather monitoring stations, and um, I know there's there's other things, but. You know, um, yeah, I, I showed this sample. And uh, the reason why I started going through this is I, I wanted to put monitoring around in my house, right? And I, I did the full Arduino thing, you know? I mean, I, I, I oh, man, if I could just show you guys something. John got put together. It just, the battery would last only like, um, like at the most 30 days, right? Even though I put it to sleep every so often. And then it would send me a message. So I, the, this, I have, I have this in, in my house on a regular 9-volt battery that lasts about a year. I'm not exaggerating. Um, the, uh, the battery at my um, uh, mailbox lasts for like, like three or four months. So um, it, you know, I had somebody do the engineering. I mean, it was kind of cool doing it myself. Hey. Uh, oh, sorry. I was waiting to oh. Oh, you want me to trigger it? Oh, okay, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, make motion. <laughs> so are most of these devices like one-way communication? Or yes. Sometimes? Uh, yeah, they're, they're usually one-way communication. So like these devices all send a 24-bit code. Mm -hmm. These uh, devices receive a 24-bit code. Right? Okay. So, um, uh, but if you want to check and see if that thing's currently turned on, is there yeah, there's there's nothing that does that. Um, or as a, you know, if you built your own, you could probably code it to do that. And I've done that with my um, my stuff. But um, just somebody figured it out, and I um, well, you know, relied on their things. So with that said, um, you know, th this is insecure. You know, you can, like you said, sniff somebody's neighbor and, and trivially. Send their, ring their doorbell, you know. And there's a YouTube video, and I was like, I don't believe it. And then, yeah, I did it myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have got three fans that use this system, and our neighbor got one. <laughs> yeah, so in the middle of the night, the fan would come on full speed. <laughs> well, you know, another one is uh, Christmas lights, right? Now, this is 433 measures devices, but I've found some from... Big lots, the Best Buy, Sears, the build controls that talk 315 megahertz. You know, just pop a radio that does that, and now you can turn somebody's Christmas lights on and off. You know, just sending a 24-bit signal. You know. I mean, it's more than that, but you know. <laughs> um, Yes, they are. They, uh, they use a mantra system encoding, uh, or some, s and then you'll see like ASK, ASK. Um, those are the other names I've seen it under. But basically, all these devices just spit out a 24-bit code, and then um, there's other things. I'm really simplifying, it. but it's trivial to like send the code. And yeah, yeah. So dropping to 315 megahertz, you can just buy a 315 megahertz. Um, like this thing right here. Is my uh, is for my Christmas lights, 
and it's 350 meters. So if I press this, it shouldn't be triggering anything. Um, so you know, it it's kind of um, it, it makes it easy, but you know when you sacrifice uh, the thing that a lot of people sacrifice with easy is security. Right? Um, so anyway, that's. I mean, it's fun. Like I said, it, if you start messing with this stuff, um, you, you can kind of get, get, gather inf interesting information around the house. I wouldn't rely on your primary means of, you know, house security, right? Um, for me personally, I, I, I have other things. I have cameras. <laughs> you know, a little side note. I got maybe a little bit too ambitious with this um, presentation. I wanted to show you guys, like, zone minder and how I can trigger a... Um, uh, an event on ZoneMinder to send you an uh, image of that particular area. Um, yeah, I didn't get time was ran out. Sorry. So, what do you use to manage all the devices? Is there a piece of software that uh, dashboard? Okay. Um, right now, uh, today, I um, I was using something called OpenHab. Uh, I I'm moving to something called um, somebody recommended it. I got to follow up with it. Because it's it's real pain to to manage, and I really wanted to show you guys what it was, and I even had the the, the host name of the um, laptop that I brought in here was named Open Hand, um, but I I just didn't have the um, stuff to, to um, the the time to configure it. So right now I have a uh, the way this is all working today is a Python script that um, loops and checks the uh, MQTT server and sends the appropriate or processes the signals as appropriate. Um, let me uh, go down to the next part, which is MQTT. Anybody know what MQTT is? Great. Yeah. This, man, I struggle with uh, trying to explain it. The most, the, the, the best way, oh man, I hate this. Um, the, the best way for me to explain it is like Twitter. Right? So when you talk to an MQTT server, you're you're subscribing to a topic. Uh, and that would be like a hashtag, I guess, in, in, in Twitter. Um, or subscribe, when you subscribe, you follow. Um, uh, and then when you publish, it's like tweeting. So what happens is, um, say computers A, B, and C are subscribing to topic first floor, computer X, can sent to topic first floor, and all those guys will receive that message that um, something happened or, or, or a message. And in my case, I just sent a 24-bit code. Um, that goes. You can send string, you can send decimals, you can send images. MQTT, uh, the version I'm using, the only supports 128 characters. Uh, this is one of those ones that, oops. This is one of those ones that I uh, was not ready to do. But I'll, I'll show you guys more um, on that later, or if you guys want to ask. Um, anyway, um, like I said, you can, you can send different types of data. In this small microcontroller environment, I'm just sending those 24-bit packets. Because um, you got to make sure your whatever device that receives it can handle that information. Like sending an image, a JPEG image, to a uh, Arduino device uh, might make it crash. And I have. I wanted to see, of course, you know, as, as pushing the boundaries. You want to see what happens when you send, like, uh, a gigabyte of data to a microcontroller. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, you guys do that too, right? <laughs> yeah, well, how, how fast is my Raspberry Pi 3B plus now, you know? Does it really do gigabit? <laughs> I know you guys, whoever had them, already tried pushing the, the bandwidth. Um, yeah, so... um. So in the code, um, I have uh, I only send uh, less than 126 characters, and that was uh, um, my my limit. There is a check so that it doesn't buffer overflow and whatnot. Um, interestingly enough, the library that I use does not have that check. There is a later library that I believe does. I talked to um, the guy that um, wrote the library. Uh, uh, you know, I just haven't had time to change my code to work with the new um, library. So putting it all together, um, oh, putting it all together, like I said, um, 
device, like this vibration device, you know, you get a signal, boom, like somebody cracks your window. It's, this sends a message to that, um, I don't know who has it right now, to, to that 433 uh, megahertz gateway. And then that talks MQTT to this uh, CentOS 7 box. The CentOS 7 box uh, does whatever it wants with that information. It can send an email, you know, it can trigger a um, camera event, you know, on Zoominder. Um, you know, it can, it can chime, right? It can, it can send another signal. Can you, can you do a chime right now? Can you slam that thing? Excuse me? Can you do a chime right now? Can you slam that I, I don't have it coded for that, but um, I, I can certainly try, you know. Here. Um, so I don't know if this is tied into this one. Okay, so, so. <laughs> well, well let, let me finish the presentation because I'm going to close off the PowerPoint. Um, so the security implications, like I said, it's not a security device. Those guys claiming to be an alarm system, they're liars, man. If you go on, a, if you go on eBay and yeah, you, you search motion sensor and if they tie the word security to it, they're lying. Right? I mean. You can like mess with your neighbors real bad, but um, you know, like I said, if you do a, a secondary system like camera or something wired or, or whatnot, then you know it, it's kind of nice to monitor things in your house. Um, so yeah, this is another change I had. So, so if you guys want more information, I haven't posted it yet. I've, last year's presentation is, is up there, but if you go to www.apple.com/presentations. You will see uh, this presentation later on tonight, and the source code. And you guys can play this at home and have it not blacked out. <laughs> hey. You can spoof a signal, right? But can you suppress the signal? Like, let's I, I guess it. To, like set off like an alarm, right? Like yeah. I spoof it. But what if I was trying to suppress it? That, that's the thing is I, I don't I don't have a way to suppress it. I, I mean, of course you can jam, uh, but then that would, you know, you 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 take out other stuff. So the, the MQTT uh, stuff that you're using is the library for the Arduino. On your laptop, you're yes. using a broker. Yeah, the broker who's, is called the broker's version of the broker are you using? Uh, I think it's 1.3 Mosquito. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, good, good point. I should put that stuff on. So is, are there special things on, on the broker that you have to think about? Uh, I, I have not for, for this low-level stuff. I mean, um, I, I, I've done presentations on MQTT talking about you know, I really test man and all that stuff. But I wanted to keep this light because I knew this is only a 45 minute. How, how about if you went through firewalls from, can you? So, so what I've done in the past to, um, I'll get to this. What I've done in the past was, um, I set up a server at uh, Amazon, AWS. Okay. And usually you can establish a TCP connection. And from anywhere else that can access that Amazon instance, they can control or you know get the uh, device information through the MQT protocol back behind the firewall. So yeah, you, you, um, just because you, you don't have to open up a port. That's my thing. Yeah, you don't have to um, go into the firewall. And that's what I was trying to illustrate. I was, I was hoping to illustrate that here, um, where we all can open up their, our phones and go to that open hab. Like I said, it didn't happen that way. And you guys could have. Um, if you want to be manipulating the devices, turn on the chime or whatever. Um, but I, I can yes. get, uh, get that. Right. So on, on the suppressing signal, are the transmitters, do they send the 24-bit uh, ID also? And the transmitters? Yes. So you could set up a table of the 24-bit codes that are unique to your setup and then exclude everything that's not? Uh, that's what I do. Uh, and, oh. and right. I, I do exclude um, stuff at the... Uh, Microcontroller. Yeah. So when it hits my server, I don't get all the stuff that my neighbors are using. Yeah. But you could, you could, but could you use that then? Just so you, you would. So if your neighbor was trying to get hold of you, it wouldn't actually activate anything on your end. Then. No, but you can sniff what your neighbors are transmitting over time, and then create a history of what they're trying to do. Yeah. And then later on, um, the stuff that you're not filtering out just spoof that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there was a YouTube video about a guy doing this to his neighbor. Like the guy even like ripped the plug out. <laughs> 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 he kept um, setting his setting his doorbell. Off. 
And yeah, we could have done that here too. Um, I know you guys want to see uh, see me try to send the signal. I might be able to. Oh, okay. So if I find that, say, my doorbell is just Some, it, 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 you can. There's some of them that. Uh, well, when it comes from the factory, it is random. But well, some of them. Well, uh, some, that. <laughs> so some of them allow um, allow you to change, like this one. Um, this remote here. I mean, when when I'm pressing it, you'll see that change. I can change the um, the code. There's a learning mode mechanism on this. Uh, this vibration one has um, jump uh, jumper pins. Mm -hmm. so, so, twenty-four bits. Oh, there's twenty-four. Well, the rules are three. My math is. Anyway, um, I think you can see that. Um, you know these devices are have their codes registered somewhere, like they're allowed in a certain range of nodes. Oh, you mean like a MAC address kind of? Yeah. But you know the, the, the part of the thing that saves you is the range, right? So um, if you if you only listen for a certain you know milliwatt um, and you know it's a neighbor within 400 feet of you, right? And it it doesn't go through walls well. I don't know what it's supposed to, right? 400 something that low of frequency. Um, but I don't think I can go to my neighbor's house across the street and save the signal. But the, my neighbors next to me, I certainly have seen their stuff. During Christmas, too, so <laughs> turn the Christmas lights. How, how long does it take to send one of these packets? So in other words, if, if I wanted to run a brute force attack and go through all 16 million 24-bit codes, how long would that take? It's about a 9600 baud. Right? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I don't know how long it's going to stay. Is that on the serial side or on the RX side? The RX side, 433 is about, about a 9600 baud. Okay. And, and you know the protocol also, it sends several, not, it, doesn't, it just doesn't send once. So in my code, I actually, uh, once I get the first um, uh, signal, I flip a bit that I've received it. So every subsequent um, message, because like I said, can send it up to 15 times. Um, I, I ignore for like x seconds or x microseconds. So you couldn't really like war drive try to turn stuff on and off. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> they do that, and um, I'm not sure. Because uh, uh, so you might hit one that has a loading code, right? Right. So it, it would take about a thousand years to do a brute force attack for 24 bit uh, at 800 uh, characters per second. 600 characters per second, I'm sorry, yes. Well, it actually takes less than that because you can do a soft and fine radio and you can listen in. And they don't really randomize the stuff. Yeah. And so you can you can listen in a few packets, decode it, mm -hmm. and start figuring out what the pattern is pretty quickly. Anybody interested in software defined radios? I can do that next year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So, you know, those little yeah. TV things. Yeah. And then now they find a way to send signals. Well, they're 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 what was that number? 11 hours. Yeah. Yeah. 9, oh, I, I don't know. Really. I, I assume 600 characters per second based on 9600 baud and uh, uh, divided by uh, 16 million divided by 600 characters per second and then I round it and then I round it down again. Uh, did I do it wrong? I think so. Well, 24 yeah. would only be three characters. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 you have to go longer than the character, you have to send them uh, a message. No, no, that, that, that is the message. That is the is, message. Is, is, is 24, the 24 bits is the message? Yes. There's no the payload message. in addition to that? No, that's yeah, the payload. The payload. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. then that's the I mean, it's still a terrible long time, but 11 hours is so... 11 hours time, you can just... Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, there's a little... It's going to be five bits at time. So yeah, I know after I do these presentations, people are like, oh, where can I buy these? I have some. I have the radios, I have the um, ESP-86. I got a couple of motion sensors. My lovely wife can work in there. Um, so yeah, we've got like five minutes left. Uh,
Any other questions? It, it, it's worth noting that there's at least one MQTT implementation that claims to support TLS. So like, the problem may be moved if you have control over the software on both ends. Well, the, 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 yeah, the MQTT connection, yeah, you can do TLS, but the 433 megahertz connection is not. How much does the jar cost? The <laughs> 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 stuff in it. <laughs> What, uh, what Linux packages are available for either Python or, or in a uh, it was, repository? It was MQTT Cable. Yeah, that's another good one I should put up there. MQTT you know, Cable and, um, uh, you know, that's uh, CentOS 7. We would have worked on Ubuntu oh, like sure. that. Um, uh, and yeah, Mosquito was the, was the book. Yeah, um, I think one point two. Do you actually recommend using a laptop or is a Raspberry Pi? Oh, Raspberry Pi will do it. My personal issue with Raspberry Pi is the SD card because you know it, it corrupts, and that, that, that once that, that once that first time happened to me, I, I said screw it, and I uh, went to. Uh, you know. What what happened to the SD card? Uh, because I, there was a certain amount of writes, and then if you like log a lot of stuff into like or a MySQL database on a Raspberry Pi, well, especially the SD card, you'll you'll wear it out. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys ever encountered that. A lot, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I use a I use a battery powered laptop, and you know, the power goes out. And send me a last gas. Yeah. Have you looked at using uh, with the MQTT uh, using quality service? You must not have I, 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 This is just messing around. You know, like, so you really don't care for this type of thing. I mean, I used the dash R for like what was the last sent message. Um, I'd love to see, um, for your next talk, um, so if you have software-defined radios, if you're interested in mesh networking, where all the devices communicate. So there's an interesting project. So I, I, I have a meetup that we're going to make with them in Red Hat. But um, one of the things we talked with the city of Red and with their Chrome network, was trying to see if we can mesh like a small little area. And <coughs> right now we've done a few, I was able to find a few um, uh, Linksys 54G Dollars and I don't know if there's a way to put mesh for them. Um, so, so, so yeah, we, we're thinking of putting like Yagi's and trying to get them and then seeing, calculating how much power to run and how much battery. So there's a group of local hams in Seattle that have been working on that for decades. Oh, I'll, I'll reach so out to them. Yeah. Wetnet was one of the names they went under. I'm not sure what they're under currently. Yeah, but yeah, using using uh, you know, old Linksys routers. With, uh, yeah, I'll, I've been trying to find um, those older blue and brown or red. Or, or just going out and buying some ubiquitous bullet ethernet. Any other questions, folks? It's, uh, it's closing in. I'm sorry. It's, I had to kind of rush a few things. My presentation in short videos. And I wanted to show you guys that you can use uh, But hopefully, you guys have lived a lot of this. Like said, Robotics room for a little bit. I know that they're doing their thing and there's some their robotics kids.